Man, this is such balls. I can't believe I'm not even going to be able to go to Chief Fest this year. Oh well, I guess there's always next year. the hell? When the hell did they start leaving this shit at the back door? Baltons agent. I don't remember ordering you. At least you got the tag. Oh well, shit. I gotta review it. I got time for this. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Kaiju Movie Review. So you might be asking yourself, Hey, Dan. Why are you standing there, you know, flashing your crotch to everybody, all willy-nilly like? Well, it's actually relevant to today's movie. Actually, the film of today was requested by Narrow to Cool. So he requested this a little while ago, and I'm just getting around to it. And for everybody else who's requested uh, movies so far, I'm sorry I haven't done any. It's not like I'm blowing you off. I just takes me a little bit to accumulate the films. So hopefully a decent amount of this season's reviews Gamera movies aside, will be fan requests. Actually, also, this film is one of the only movies from the 50s that I've reviewed so far that does not was not made in 1957. So just to get right into it, this is The Giant Gila Monster from 1959. So we start the film out with a couple teenagers, you know, sitting in their car, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, making out, doing what teenagers do. And you hear this, oh no, what was that? And, poosh, you know, giant hand, poosh, blowing up the car, you know, destroying it and whatnot. And then we get the title screen. So, and then it cuts over to a group of teenagers, you know, hot rodders, hanging out with their ladies and whatnot. And they're like, hey, you know, Where's, uh, where's, uh, where's Pam and Jace? You know, where they at? You know, nobody knows. And they're like, oh, well, we don't know where they're at, so fuck them. We'll just take off. You know, they'll figure it out. Uh, anyway, so, cut to the next day. The bo the father of the boy that was attacked at the beginning of the film, of course, they don't know this at this time, goes to the sheriff and reports him missing. You know, he's apparently, he's, he's a dick. He's like the prick of the film. He's there just, you know, just being an ass and just ruining everybody else's shit. So anyway, so, you know, Dr. Dickhead here uh, goes to the sheriff and says, Well, my boy's missing, you know. You best be finding him or your job is mine. You know, the sheriff's like, Go ahead, dude. Fucking take it. Because they're in like a really rural area. And it's like, the, the sheriff there has jurisdiction over 10,000 square miles of land and 1,000 miles of road. So he's just like, whatever, douche, you know. Fuck, you can have my job if you think you want to do it, cover all that terrain by yourself. And personally, with me, I would never question this. I mean, if you have one dude that does the job and does it well, that much terrain by himself, I'd say let him keep it. If he enjoys it, fuck it, let him have it. Don't even argue. But he's a douche, you know. Whatever, I gotta complain, I gotta ruin it for everybody else. If you don't find him, you know, I don't want none of your shit. You find him, or I'm gonna have your job. If you ask me, it's that Chase Winston. He's older than the others. Sets them all wrong. Why, he's got more influence on Pat than I have. Chase Winston does more about keeping them in line than getting them in trouble than I know. He's supported his mother and sister ever since his dad died on one of your drill rings. Your son could take a page out of his book, Mr. Wheeler. When I get through with my son, he won't have a book left. Now you locate him or I'll have your job. If you want to be the only peace officer in 10,000 square miles and 1,000 miles of road, you're welcome to it. I'll do everything I can to locate both of them, Mr. Wheeler. So he goes to the, this hot rod or this garage where the main character is. And he goes by the name of Chase, and he works at the garage. He's really familiar with vehicles and stuff. And he can do a bunch of other shit, which isn't relevant at this point. So, um, 
they talked to him. He's like, well, you know, uh, a couple of your buddies. He's like, keep this on the down low, but a couple of your buddies, you know, they're missing. They never came back last night. And he's like, do you think do you think they wouldn't elope? And I'm like, you know, they were together for like a year. He's like, I don't know, maybe, probably not though. You know, because I don't know. I imagine people, you know, people do that, but, you know, whatever, but, he's like, well, I don't know, I mean, maybe, maybe not, he was saving up money for a blower and shit, you know, he could have the money for it, but I, I really doubt he did it. We get a good exchange of dialogue here with, uh, between the sheriff and Chase, which are, which they're both very close, and, because Chase is, you know, all good Samaritan, but I'll cover that when we get a little later, but uh, we get a good exchange of dialogue, and it's, it's really cool how they, uh, how they explain stuff and bring up history without just shoving it down your throat. It seems natural how it just goes in with the conversation. Which I like that and probably bring that up a little more later. But you know, they're like, well, we don't know where to go. He's like, uh, you know, then he leaves. They're like, we'll just look around. They keep looking, can't find anything. More people start disappearing. You know, later on the sheriff's like, well, can you get, you know, we got, I got a lot of terrain here, you know. This is a lot of space to cover by myself. He's like, can you get some of your hot rodding buddies to, to go look too? And he's like, well, yeah, you know, we could we could do that. I mean, we don't do anything else. We're just teenagers. We don't do nothing else. Fuck that, you know. We'll do it. So he does it, and you know, more people disappear because that's pretty much all that happens in this. Uh, one one particular scene is where a train is attacked by the monster, and that kind of sets everything up for like the ending of the film. It's really bad, like I'm just cutting to this far, but everything that happens in between, usually it's it's something, somebody dying, it's like uh, talking, somebody dying, talking, somebody dying, talking, somebody dying. Uh, the people just disappear. I mean, there's, there's some blood, but in some cases there's not any, or not very much. Uh, so, I mean, it's everything that pretty much happens in between, a, a good majority of it's not really super relevant. It's like subplots that aren't necessary to the main plot, so that's why I'm not discussing them here. Uh, the only one that's really kind of a more important subplot is he, he there's this one dude he, he help offers to tow because he's fucking drunk off his ass, and he's like, well, you know, you know, what happened? You know, because the dude's like, like, you know, he had a tree. You know, well, it was a big lizard, you know, it came out in front of me, and I, woo, you know, I swerved out a tree. He's like, you know, whatever, dude, have another drink. I'm superb. Seven to a box, no corners. I'm a round house. Sorry, I asked, Mr. Uh, Smith. Horatio Alger Smith. Sorry, I asked that, too. How'd you get in the ditch? You fall asleep? Oh, no, no, no. There was, there was this big pink and black thing drove right in front of me. It had stripes this wide. Sure, sure. And, uh... That whole scene's kind of different. <laughs> I don't think it was acted very well, but I won't go into it. Uh, but that's that's the subplot that leads up to something about him, you know, singing and shit. And but it, it's not really super relevant to the whole show. So like I'm like I'm I hate to just jump, but really that's where you want to cut it off. After the monster attacks the train, that's where you cut it off because that's when it starts getting towards the climax. And I don't mean, like I said, I don't mean to rush it, but there's just really not that much important content to mention, yeah, mention here. So, we'll just move on from that. So as for characters in the film, Chase, the main character, you know, he's a pretty decent main character, does his job, and, you know, he can do just about everything. You know, he's a mechanic, you know, he can sing, apparently, he's like the super good Samaritan, doing all that good stuff for his, you know, he's got a, a, a mother and a little sister, a little sister that's got problems, and he spends all of his money, and he works so hard and gives all of his money to his mother and his sister so they can, you know, eat and live well, and his, you know, sister can get better and stuff. And, What the hell are you doing up here? I don't remember putting you up here. Hold on. Anyway, sorry about that.